in mitosis, we are going to see, again, how the cytoskeletal filaments play a role. Again, we're going to be looking at the microtubules and the motor proteins associated with microtubules, kinesin, the plus N-directed motor protein, and dynein, the minus N-directed motor protein. And what we're going to be looking at with mitosis is how these microtubules and the motor proteins work together to help pull the chromosomes apart during the mitotic, um, during mitosis. So for our class and for the cell biology purpose, we're not going to be looking at every single little detail within the various phases of mitosis. So what I'm going to do with this particular clip is give you a brief overview of the major things you need to know of each of the phases interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. Then what we're going to do is look closely at the spindle apparatus which is the microtubules coming from the two different centrioles on either side of the cell. So we're going to see that there's three types of microtubules that come out of the centriole and then in detail we are going to see how those microtubules contribute to anaphase A which is where we pull the chromosome to either of the poles and anaphase B where the poles themselves, the centrioles, get also pushed and pulled further apart from each other and then eventually we go into telophase so the major ones that we're going to look at in detail again are the microtubules, the three types and anaphase A and anaphase B. But right now we're going to give you a brief overview of the overall mitotic process. So again, the acronym is IPMAT, or if you want to use this one, IP more after T. Okay? So that's just a fun little mnemonic to help you remember the various phases of mitosis. IP more after T interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. So with interphase, interphase, remember, if you look at the cell cycle, is your G1, S phase, and G2. Then you have your M phase, which is everything else after interphase, prophase, all the way to telophase and cytokinesis. This is so interphase is all of the other parts, the G1, the S, and the G2. So this is where the cell realizes that it's time to, or will be time to go through mitosis and is going to prepare itself. So we're going to have chromosome duplication and cohesion. So chromosomes going through replication, which is the S phase. Cohesion, so the chromosomes uh, will pair up in various ways eventually. Centrosome duplication. So again, the centrioles and whatnot are going to begin to duplicate. So then we will have two of these centrosomes. Okay. Then once we've finished up with interphase, so again, G1, the S, and then G2, we're ready to move on then into the M phase, or mitosis itself. So mitosis then starts out with prophase. In prophase, we've got a few things happening. So in prophase, we're going to have the breakdown of interphase microtubules, as it says here. In other words, during prophase, we're going to get rid of and break down the microtubules that were set up during the, the cell, the cytoskeletal microtubules. We want to get rid of those because we need to make room for the new microtubules which are going to be contributing to the separation of the chromosomes. Okay. The mitotic asters, or the centrioles, the MTOCs, the microtubule organizing centers for uh, mitosis, are going to go ahead and separate and start going to either side of the pole. Okay. And then the chromosomes are going to condense. Okay. So remember, in a lot of your pictures, when you look at mitosis, you can actually see the chromosomes underneath the scope during this process because this is in prophase. So the chromosomes are condensing or the DNA is supercoiling, okay? Making it visible and then obviously easier for separation to occur. Prometaphase is also mentioned, but you can combine prophase and prometaphase. So with 
pro phase, as we're going to keep it going, the nuclear envelope breaks down. So remember, the nuclear envelope is the uh, membrane-bound structure of the nucleus. It separates the DNA from the cytoplasm. But now we want to break down this nuclear envelope, so therefore all these new microtubules that are being assembled can get access to the chromosomes in order to separate them. Do keep in mind how this happens. So remember, MPF activity, that is the maturation promoting factor or mitos, mitotic promoting factor, MPF, is responsible for phosphorylating the nuclear laminates, so the protein that makes up the nuclear envelope. So MPF, when it phosphorylates the um, nuclear laminates, is going to cause it to disassemble so the lamins disassemble, get packaged into vesicles, and move out of the way. So now the DNA, which are now condensed chromosomes, we have access to them okay, through the microtubules. Then you have metaphase. In metaphase, the microtubules will make connections to the chromosomes and push and pull them in different directions and eventually line up the chromosomes down the middle of the cell nicely. This is metaphase. So chromosomes lined up in the middle of the cell. And then what we have after metaphase is the A, the anaphase. Now anaphase is split up into anaphases A and anaphases B. In anaphase A, what we're going to be looking at, and again we're going to be looking at this process in detail in the next clip, anaphase A is where the chromosomes are going to be separated. So the chromosomes, remember they've been duplicated, so they're sister chromatids, and these sister chromatids get pulled apart. So half of the sister chromatids get pulled to the left, half of the sister chromatids get pulled to the right pole. Okay? Anaphase B contributes to the poles themselves. So the centrioles getting pulled and pushed even further apart. apart. This helps to stretch out the cell, which then helps lead into cytokinesis, or telophase rather, excuse me. So then in telophase, because we've stretched out, we've separated the chromatids from each other, we've stretched the cell out by pushing and pulling on the poles with anaphase B, then what's going to happen is a few things. One, the new nuclear envelopes are going to develop. And I stress nuclear envelopes, multiple, because now we're preparing to break this one cell into two new daughter cells. So therefore, we're going to start to assemble or reassemble the nuclear envelope. So the nuclear lamins that were phosphorylated by MPF back in prophase, those vesicles are going to get dephosphorylated and the nuclear lamins are going to go ahead, be released from the vesicles, and reassemble into a nuclear envelope around the sister chromatids on the right side and on the left side. Okay. Then we also have a contractile ring in the center of the cell, which is made up of actin and myosin 2. Now remember, actin and myosin 2 interact with each other and cause contraction. Well, this contraction is going to uh, trigger and help to pinch off the, into two new daughter cells. And that's what happens in cytokinesis. So again, in telophase, we're reestablishing the nuclear envelope around the two new nuclei. And the actin and myosin 2 start to assemble here in the center. And then in cytokinesis, this is where we have the actin and myosin going through their cross-bridge cycle, causing contraction, and this leads to the final pinching off of this one cell into two new daughter cells. So that's the overall process, and as much detail as you need to know for this uh, cell biology course of mitosis.